today we're finding the volume of prisms. So remember the equation that we're working with is volume equals the base area or the area of the base times the height. So we're going to have to determine what shape our base is to be able to multiply our height. So looking at number one, we have a rectangular prism. That means that our base is a rectangle. So we have a rectangle right here. The, the sides of the rectangle would be five and seven. And then the height or the length of this is pushed out 10 inches. So here is our base and it's being pushed out 10 inches, which means that's gonna be our height. So when we're solving this, our volume is gonna be equal to the area of our base. Our base is going to be right here. So I'm gonna shade that in so you can see that. This is our base. We need the area of that. So we know that it's seven times five. So seven times five for our base, and then we're gonna be multiplying it by the height, or in this case, it's being pushed to the side 10 inches. So our volume is gonna be equal to seven times five, which is 35 times 10. So volume is 350 inches cubed. Now where we get the cube here for the problem is from the units themselves. So we're taking seven inches times five inches times 10 inches. So we have one, two, three inches being multiplied, which is where the three comes from, because this is a three dimensional image. On number three, we're gonna do the same thing. This time, our base is a triangle. So our volume now is going to be the area of our triangle, which is one half times the length of our triangle, which is 3.5 times the height of our triangle, which is two, and then multiplied by our height or the whatever that base is being pushed out. So if we have this front triangle right here, Notice our other triangle in the back, it's being pushed that length, so that becomes the h that we multiply by. So multiplied by 4.2. Now when we start to multiply these out, we can put this in our calculator as 0.5 times 3.5 times 2 times 4.2 or we can simplify first. Now because this is a fraction, we can simplify this two with the two in the fraction. So this two and that two cancel each other out. And then we would just have to multiply the 3.5 times the 4.2. So our volume, we put that in our calculator, it gives us 14.7 feet cubed. And it is already rounded for us to the nearest tenth, so we do not have to do anything else for that one. The next problem that we're going to work on is number seven. And this is an estimation. It says estimate to find the proper, approximate volume of each prism. Estimate. So what we're going to do first is take the fractions that we have and go ahead and estimate them to the nearest whole number. Now, notice that the nearest whole number could be behind the number that we have. So six and seven eighths is almost seven. So we're gonna round this, it's gonna be about seven. Four and one fourth, we're gonna estimate that. It's closer to four to four. And then three and one eighth, we're gonna estimate that to about three. Then we can go ahead and find our volume. So remember our volume again 
is the area of our base times our height. Our base in this one is going to be this side right here. We have a rectangle. Here's our base. So our base is going to be volume equals 3 times 4, because we're using our estimated vol uh, values, times whatever it's being pushed over. So our height in this one is going to be 7. So height is not always up and down. So now when we continue to solve this, volume is equal to 3 times 4, which is 12, times 7. So volume is equal to 12 times 7, which is 84. My unit was yards, and it's volume, so it's cubed. And there's my answer. Now on the final problem that we're going to work through is the word problem at the bottom of the page, number 9. Now it says the United States Post Office has two different priority mail flat rate boxes. Which box has the greater volume? Justify your answer. So what we're going to have to do is find the volume of box 1 and find the volume of box 2 and compare them to see which one is bigger. Now I'm going to let you figure out box 1 and we're going to do box 2 together. Um, to get you started. Now we have some fractions here, so we have to multiply fractions. So the first thing we have is 3 and 3 eighths, and we need to change that to a improper fraction. So 8 times 3 is 24, plus 3 gives us 27 over 8, and we're multiplying that by 11 and 7 eighths. So 8 times 11 is 88, plus 7 gives us 95 over 8. And then our final fraction, we have 8 times 13 plus 5 will give us 109 eighths. So our volume is going to be equal to these three dimensions multiplied. Okay, so first change them to improper fractions. When I multiply that out, my volume 27 times 95 times 109, I used a calculator for that, and got 279,585. On the bottom, I get 8 times 8 times 8, which gives me 512. Now from there, I can divide those two numbers so 279,585 divided by 512, and I get 546.1, I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth, inches cubed. So that's the, vol the volume of box 2. So now I want you to go ahead and find the volume of box 1 using the same method that we did for box 2. Then you're going to compare your two volumes and see which one is bigger.